Okay, so here's our little St. Patrick's Day snake forged out of copper. Hi, Dan Tokar here at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. We're a couple of days from St. Patrick's Day, and believe it or not, I have a client that every year for 25 years uh, has uh, had a standing order for a snake uh, because St. Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland. It's as good a reason to make snakes as any. Uh, so every year I have to come up with a new and different design, uh, something I haven't made before. Uh, I've done all sorts. I've done snakes forged out of steel cable. I've done snakes forged out of lead that you could bend around things. Uh, I've made flex flexible snakes and copper snakes and brass and everything you can think of. So this year I'm going to start with a, uh, a piece of quarter inch copper uh, and forge a little snake because there isn't much room left for all those snakes in one place. So we'll make a baby snake. So I think the first thing I'm going to have to do is upset the part that will be the head. And this is also where we can have a conversation about why I have so many different sized hammers. Um, one of the tricks to being able to upset stock is, is you need to have a hammer which is heavy enough to drive the material back on itself, but not so heavy that it pushes it out of the vise or bends the part that you have uh, uh, standing proud. Uh, ideally, you want a hammer that's just heavy enough to drive the, uh, the stock back into itself. So this is why uh, smaller uh, ball peen hammers are useful for riveting because if you use too heavy of a hammer, you either drive the rivet out or you bend it over before you upset it. You want a hammer that's sort of in scale with the work. So dealing with a piece of quarter inch copper, I'll probably start with something like a eight ounce ball peen hammer, something like that. But anyway, I have to set up. Okay, so there is my ball peen hammer, my stock and the vise. I'm gonna put this in the forge and be back in just a minute. People don't seem to realize that you can forge copper about as easily as anything. Okay, the proper forging temperature for copper is a very light red because it melts at 1950 degrees. So if you got it to a very bright red, it would be very close to its melting point. All right, I've got to straighten that a little bit. I'll leave a little less of it sticking out. Okay. 
straighten it out again, set it again, back and forth. It also helps if you have a square end on the rod that you're upsetting. If you've got anything other than a flat end on that, it tends to buckle. All right, I'm going to get this thing hot again. Straighten it out. You can see how the end is now slightly off. So what I'll do is I'll tap it to get the end closer to square. Now I'll heat this part up again and upset a little more. Again, just a very light heat. All right, I'll straighten it out a little more. heat it up again but you can see how it's beginning to thicken a little on the end we're just sneaking up on this a little bit at a time There we are again. There. We're starting to get some mass. I'll straighten it out again. Heat it up again. I can already hear a train coming in the distance. All right, that might be upset enough. I might have enough mass to make a nice head out of that. So because the train is coming, I am going to move the camera around and set up for the anvil. So I've got the upset end and I'm going to forge out the rough shape of the snake's head now. Copper forges fairly nice. You just have to remember not to get it as hot as you would mild steel. Uh, 
it melts at 1,950 degrees, so the foraging temperature is just a barely visible red, and it's so soft when it's at that temperature. Look at that. And then even this little hammer triangular head here. It's hot again. I am going to have to use my gloves because copper does conduct heat pretty well. You can also hot forge silver, but the sulfur in coal uh, makes silver turn black and you get this very nasty scale on it. Uh, copper is not so bad, but if you have high sulfur coal, it can end up hurting the copper, making it go black. Now I'm going to take this little part up here and make a little shelf. And I rock it back and forth to take the sharp corners off. and make a little bit of a snout. Tapping a little bit on the end. And again, this is a pretty rough. So we have something that looks like that now. Now I'm going to kind of do the back of his head because it's squared off from having been upset in the vise. So all I'm going to do is gently round the back of his head a little bit. This is all very soft, very easy tapping. No huge hammer blows here. This little guy is little and he's made out of copper. So it hardly takes any effort at all. You see that like, like that. All it took all right. That rounded the back of his head out. Now I'm going to neck the neck in just a tiny bit. It does not need to be much. So that's sort of the preform for the head. The rest of this can be done cold, so I'm going to quench this just to cool it off. And for copper, quenching from a high temperature uh, actually softens it, sort of the backwards of, of steel. So we have the shape of the head. Now I'm going to have to turn the camera around again so you can see things are two center punches, a little one and a big one, and a thin hot cut chisel which at room temperature works just fine on soft copper and of course our friend here Mr. Snakehead. Alright, so we get him stuck in the vise first. My vice was laughing at me. All right, so I'm going to punch the eyes first. And it's nice to make them symmetrical. 
this guy might end up being kind of a comical cartoon looking snake but still you know you make the eyes bulge out and I'm not trying to use uh, my special eyeball punches or anything complicated because I'm trying to show you what you can get away with with just the kind of tooling you have lying around the shop. You don't need to have a custom made eyeball punch to do this. You can make reasonable eyeballs just with the center punches you have lying around. And you see when I punch like that, it makes the ridges behind his eye swell out. And I'm trying to keep them kind of at the same angle. Okay. And if I want to make kind of an interesting little division, I can take the center punch and tap and kind of make that uh, little hollow that some snakes kind of have that leads up from behind their jaws back around their head. All right. And now what I'll do is punch his nostrils because how are you going to catch anything if you can't smell it? So a couple of nostrils. And now I'll take the little chisel. And you want to go gently with the chisel at first until you define a good uh, line because it's easy to have it uh, lead off in this soft material so what I do is I I kind of stick the chisel I'm working around the camera a bit See, he's a friendly little snake. He's smiling at us. So you can see his his expression now. He's he's a happy little snake. And again, this is the sort of simple comic book kind of snake that was traditional on a lot of things because I've seen these kinds of very simple snakes used on um, the ends of uh, chain hooks on wagons, um, decorations on hasps, on toolboxes, um, just an awful lot of little things. And they weren't the, uh, the modern versions which are very elaborate and kind of uh, complicated. I mean, people make dragons and other things, but if you actually get a chance to see any 18th or early 19th century little garden snakes, because uh, they did make them as scarecrows for gardens, they're very simple. They just have to sort of suggest things. And again, I could get very elaborate and spend all afternoon making one of these guys. But what I'm showing you is kind of a small, simple one in copper, because uh, that's what I need for this customer. And now what I'm going to do is decorate the body um, by doing a little bit of uh, twisted scale work. Uh, so I will forge this square, twist it, uh, forge it square and untwist it, do one of those kinds of blacksmith knurling numbers, and, and give some suggestion of scales. So I've got Mr. Snake here, and I'm just going to rough forge him. into a square in his body.
I've got that. Now I'll twist that. I'll put him in there. Use the bending wrench. One. And then I'll re-square it and untwist it. Okay, so we got Mr. Twisty Snake. All right, now I'll untwist him. Back in there. Oops. I'm probably going to have to anneal this, soften it up in the fire by heating and quenching because it's now work hardened enough that it's bending back here in the unworked section. So I'll heat this up and quench it. So annealing copper is very simple. You get it up to a dull red and quench it in water and that will anneal it. You have to be careful that you don't get any little hot spots because you can melt this thing in one little spot pretty easily. You don't want Mr. Snake to lose his nose. I just want to barely be able to see the heat. again. All right, got to get a good grip on here. Oops, need a better grip. Such a small little thing, it's hard to get it to bend. I might be better off with vice grips on this. There it goes. So now he's got some little some little snake bumps. Kind of looks a little bit like scales. I will forge out his tail now. Do that, I'll cut him off probably about right there and then forge the tail down. So I can use my hot cut and go cut. 
gently, gently. It is copper. It's very soft, even at room temperature. Nick it all the way around. Break it. Put that off. Now I will forge the tail out. These are not snake tongs, they're bolt tongs, but bolt tongs hold snakes very nicely. And again, it won't take but 20 seconds to get that tail on and up the forge. Little piece of copper. There, just barely glowing. And even when it's gone to black, it's still moving nicely because copper is still forgeable down to about 500 degrees. Well, it actually could go all the way to room temperature, but you can get little splits and frays. It starts to get a little bit unhappy at 500 degrees or so. But, see how fast and I keep it square until it's pretty small and then I will break the corners and round it out. Alright, I am just going to anneal this and work it cold because we don't really need to have it hot. Oh, what the heck. I'll forge it hot anyway. I can argue with myself about this because sometimes it doesn't really matter that much on something this size. I worry about really small things because they can melt very easily. All right, I am going to anneal this and then do the final shaping uh, cold. Because I'll be able to manipulate it a little easier. So, that's all I'm doing. Heating it up very gently, very gently. I don't want it to be more than a very dull red when I quench it. There. They quenched. And being room temperature copper, I can, in thin sections, I can actually do pretty much anything I would do hot with steel. Do a little hook. Just giving it a little bit of figure. And again, being copper, I can do a lot of things just with my fingers, bending it around. Uh, sometimes using a, a bending fork or a little, uh, one of these things, the pair of scrolling tongs that you get in close to things like the head. Sort of squeeze it. Right there we go.
All right, and I like to have them have their heads up a little bit. Uh, I'll stick that in the vise. I'll stick that in the vise and just very gently tap his head up. Like I said, if they have their head up off the, uh, the tabletop, it makes them look a little more lively. Huh. I have a little bit of a twist there too, so why don't I... One of the things about copper is it is soft enough. Just fiddling around. Yeah, I still managed to have his head come out bent. All right. All right, now I've got to bring the head in a little bit. That requires maybe just a tiny bit of heat. I think maybe what I need to do is get just that part hot so I can get him bent around. Maybe I could just do it around the pin. Hmm. Or the anvil. I guess I can just do it around the anvil. Maybe if I do his head all the way around. Or I need the tail to be more. Uh, I'll even use a board. Okay, that's not too bad. He's kind of a cute guy. We'll get up close here and see.
All right. So. I've got another train coming. But I think this is my fellow. This is my little snake. For okay. So here's our little St. Patrick's Day snake forged out of copper.